Plants are found all over the world in many forms. There are hot, dry, tropical bushes and frost-covered tundra, humid, windy coastal forests, and crowded yet lush vegetation in alpine valleys. Plants are found in the oceans and deserts as well. There are about 350,000 species of plants discovered and described in the world in all kinds of shapes and sizes. This juniper, growing at the peak of a high mountain, is more than 4,000 years old and one of the oldest trees on Earth. The Rafflesia is found in the tropical forest and is quite a phenomenal sight. It produces the biggest blossom of the world with a diameter of more than 80 centimeters. The plant has neither stems or leaves and is a parasitic species. Few people have thought about this. The world is built upon the blossoms. Flowers are initiators of life cycle. A flower is extraordinary in its accomplishment. It is magnificence revealed in the smallest details of nature. All life looks forward to the blossoming of a flower. A bird's eye view of Jinmen shows us that the island is covered in luxuriant green vegetation. The granite gneiss reveals itself as low hills all over the island, and many hardy and salt-resistant plants are found amongst the rocks. Blue waters and white waves surround the island. From afar, the horizon stretches to infinity. The green coastline adds layers of charm to the scenery, the golden beaches and bays form a most beguiling silhouette. It is hard to believe that this beautiful island used to be a dry, bare land without signs of greenery. It is hard to believe that this captivating paradise used to be the front line of a long and drawn out civil war. The island owes its lush environment to the long-term tree planting campaigns of the army. Many species of plants were introduced to prevent wind erosion, retain rainwater, and provide camouflage. Over the decades, the army invested a huge amount of resources to transform a bare island into a beautiful garden within the sea. Naturally, the extensive planting is a great boost to the environment. Life always finds its path. The army and the people of Jinmen work together to plant trees, store water, and create greenery. The native vegetation thrived under these favorable circumstances and together with the introduced species, created the varied vegetation that is Jinmen today. Plants grow, blossom, and bear fruit at a very slow rate that is imperceptible to the naked eye. This explains why we view plants in a fairly fixed way. As a matter of fact, the vitality and feelings of plants are comparable to those of animals. From time-lapse recordings, we can clearly see the elegant rhythm of the plants. They stretch and move like dancers.
plants under threat will initiate all kinds of defensive mechanisms. They build up their immune system, or they find ways to deflect the attack of herbivores. Plants are able to communicate with each other. They can also sense the needs of animals and sync their pollination with animals perfectly. The flower is the reproduction organ of a plant. All parts of the flower are extensions of the leaves. The leaves under the carpal and stamen lose their chlorophyll to become colorful petals. In the natural world, not every kind of plant put forth blossoms. Most angiosperms feature conspicuous flowers with vivid colors and enticing fragrance. Because of these attractive blossoms, the plants are known as flowering plants. The red fruit fig tree and the climbing fig are examples of plants that hide their flowers within the syconium. They are also known as flowerless fruit in Chinese. Ferns and moss are flowerless as well, and they use spores to propagate. Plants do not waste their energy needlessly. Every flower is precious. The blossoms of the elder flower roses are small and numerous, set in a compound umbel. The flowers do not blossom at the same time. From the time-lapse recording, we can clearly see the flowers blossoming in turns. This helps the plant to adapt to the changes in the climate and reduce the risk of the blossoms being deluged by rain. The elder flower roses take turns to blossom profusely and heartily. Such a tactic greatly enhances its chances of pollination and ensures that specific insects are well served. Every plant blossoms in its own way and at its own timing. The creeping dayflower starts to bloom at dawn. When the first beams of sunlight penetrate the forest, the flower's blue petals unfold like wings and are soon blooming in earnest within an hour. The warmth of the sunlight holds the key that unlocks the blossoms. When sunlight alights upon the flower buds of the melastoma, the warmth triggers the blossoming almost instantly. The flowers of the melastoma are bright and eye-catching. The pinkish golden stamens are bended at joints, a design that allows larger sized bees to land and help pollination. Whatever the circumstances are, plants are able to find ways to refine and specialize its art of pollination. The fruit nurtures all seeds. To protect and spread the seeds, the fruit comes in all kinds of forms and colors. There are also many ways to spread the seeds. The switch sorrel's winged fruit has thin wings, and the seeds are thus carried away by wind. The seeds of the liana are equipped with fine hairs at the tips so that the seeds can be carried away by the wind to faraway places. The winter in Jinmen is affected by the northeast monsoon. Hence, many plants rely on the wind to spread their seeds. Once the winds arrive, many winged seeds take flight and embark on their unknown journeys. Fruit that rely on birds to disperse their seeds have several things in common. The sizes of the fruit must be just right. Birds do not have teeth and do not chew. So fruit that can be swallowed directly are the best choices. 
Also, the birds must gain something in return. Express delivery comes with a cost. Sweet and nutritious flesh is the most appreciated payment. And of course, the seeds must be small and strong to withstand the digestive powers of their carrier, so that when the seeds are released from the bowels of the birds, they are far away from their mother trees. Some migratory birds can easily disperse seeds thousands of miles away, using their extensive flights to achieve this aim in a timely manner. If you observe carefully the fruit of the oriental bush cherry, the calorie pear, the native raspberry, the umbelia, and the oriental bittersweet, they are designed perfectly for the birds in terms of their colors and sizes. How can we not be impressed by the intricate designs of these plants? Although the coastal areas may look dull and plain at first sight, they are actually home to a variety of life forms. After late spring, the coastal plants bloom in succession. The evening primroses cover the sandy dunes with its orange blossoms. The myoperum has very delicate purple gamopetalous flowers. This beautiful plant was very nearly extinct and IUCN listed it as endangered. After June, the sandy dunes are decorated by dots of pink blossoms. These are the hardiest spread of color of beach morning glories earning it the deserved name of Queen of the Beach. Plants by the sea must face strong winds and a high level of salt content. So these plants have adopted different forms to adapt to these conditions. The beach morning glory stems and leaves stay close to the ground and the beach vitex crawls on the ground as it grows. All these are adaptations to mitigate the effects of the wind and loss of moisture. Reducing the surface area of the leaves best combats the loss of moisture. The littoral spine grass has thick, hardy, and spiny leaves. Clustering bushes with dense leaves are not adverse to strong winds. They can also reduce the loss of sand effectively. Hence, they are essential plants for the breaking of winds and fixation of the sands. In the face of strong winds, Plants on the dunes have their unique ways of pollination. The littoral spine grass bears ball-shaped fruit that resemble sea urchins. They are tossed across the sand by the winds, and the seeds tumble out of the fruit into the sand during collisions. The plum rains of May are exactly what the plants of an arid land need. Once the sandy land is showered with rain, the sundew quietly puts forth its delicate scapes. In the morning sun, the petite and dainty flowers present a unique look of freshness and tenderness. The leaves are densely covered with sticky tentacles and reveal the special ability of the plant. On the eastern part of the island, where the presence of humans is rare. There are lowland areas where water runs through and are home to many rare and precious species of wetland plants. If the rains persist, the seemingly plain grounds become a tapestry of life and colors, as if by special design. Among the many species of wetland plants, the insectivorous plants attract the most attention and are mainly found in nutrient-deficient sandy wetlands. They catch insects to supplement their nutrition intake during periods of blossoms and fruit bearing. The Indian sundew's stem and leaves are covered with hairy glands. The glands secrete smells of honey and thus lay its deadly trap for the insects. Once an insect is captured, enzymes are secreted to digest the victim.
On Mount Taiwu, there are many rocks. Plants find their way to thrive in between the cracks and crevasses. And everywhere you are reminded of the hardiness and tenacity of the plants. This rocky scenery is beautiful, yet full of challenges. During spring and February, the oriental bush cherry is the first plant to blossom in spring. Its pink, delicate blossoms are timely reminders that spring has arrived. During spring, the calorie pear puts forth its little surprise, white blossoms with hints of red. The blossoms sway to the wind and aptly usher in a season of awakening and growth. Also belonging to the Rosaceae family is the Spirea. When in full bloom, it seems to exert all its energy into presenting all its blossoms in one go. Covered with splendid fragrance, the tree brings a jubilant and unique presence to the Rocky Mountain. In April, the temperature goes up again. The warm southern winds bring in waves of moisture. Different forces are at play when the dry lands become moist with rain. The lilies wave back and forth while raising their buds, as if they were afraid that spring would leave them behind. The Indian hawthorn proudly presents its snow-white blossoms. The climbing violet grows amongst the rocky crevasses, dainty yet standing firm. The cockspur thorn's flowers are reserved in plain. It relies on the wind to disperse its seeds. Hence, there is no need for excessive adornment. The skullcaps, the flax lilies, the Chinese senega, the azaleas, and many other plant species have their own forms and colors. Together, they make up a beautiful song of spring on the Rocky Mountains. After several episodes of spring rain, the gardenia twirl its blossoms to announce the arrival of summer. The changes of the clouds and mountain colors are typical phenomena of summer and also foretell the display of colors. A blossom beckons with its form and color, while its fragrance is an invisible yet deadly temptation. The mock orange plant bears small and delicate flowers, but its perfume-like fragrance attracts many insects. These insects are completely bowled over by the lovely smell and are amply rewarded by the nectar. Besides the many mind-boggling species of native shrubs, the granite gneiss is also home to many special species of climbing plants. The Chinese star jasmine and elderflower rose enter their blooming period during the plum rain season. The capricious weather, coupled with stretches of snow-white blossoms, and the strong entrancing fragrance mingling with the moisture in the air come together as the most poetic picture of the rocky lands. The quillwort is a very rare species of aquatic fern. The plant was discovered in a pond on Mount Taiwu, a significant discovery in Jinmen's history of plant taxonomy. This surprising event also highlighted the ability of migrating birds as dispersers of seeds and spores. Plants form their organic material essential to their growth through photosynthesis. They effectively utilize sunlight and transform the carbon dioxide in the air into carbohydrates. The carbohydrates become part of the structure of the plants. 
and the transformation process provides 20% of the oxygen in the atmosphere. The ability of plants to transform solar energy into chemical energy is not only beneficial to the plants themselves, but serve a very important supporting role for other life forms. A tree is home to many caterpillars. If all goes well, they will become beautiful butterflies. A forest supports many species of birds. Different birds are like hunters armed with different hunting tools. Some collect nectar, some use the petals, some eat the fruit, and some feed on insects or other animals. Energy is passed on through the various trophic levels. The wetlands of Lake Tse provide a habitat to thousands of birds. Green and lush plants provide habitats for three quarters of all living organisms. Almost all life depends on them. The presence of a great diversity of plant species is an indication of a healthy environment. Sunlight, air, water, plants, and other organisms are part of an intricate tapestry. They compete with each other and also maintain a balance. Every species has its special role and task, and every species is irreplaceable in the ecosystem.